In our previous video, we constructed a basic Stroop task with two trials. However, building each trial by hand takes too much time. Much better would be to create an object that does the work for us. Lists allow us to do just that, and we're going to use them to expand our Stroop task. To review, we have a welcome screen, an instruction screen, and a Stroop trial with a colored word. The color can either be congruent with the word, for example, the word red, written in red ink, or incongruent, for example, the word blue, written in red ink. In this example, congruency is a factor, an aspect of the experiment that can be manipulated. This factor has two levels, congruent and incongruent. The goal of the experiment is to compare levels and to test for differences. To start, click and drag a list object to the timeline. Because the list will be repeating the Stroop trials, we insert it between the instruction screen and the fixation screen. Rename it Stroop List, and then double click on it. In the list, the rows are called levels, and the columns are called attributes. Think of the levels as trials, and the attributes as variables. In E prime, attributes are a special class of variable. They can be used in other objects, and they will be logged into the output files at the end of the experiment. We first need to specify a procedure that the list will use for displaying trials. Click on Procedure, and then type Stroop Proc. If the procedure does not exist, ePrime will ask you if you want to create it, and will also ask you if you want this to be the default for all the trials in the list. Select Yes for both. Double-click on Stroop Proc to bring up another procedural timeline. This brings up an important point. ePrime is hierarchical, meaning that procedures can contain other procedures, and lists can contain other lists. The basic flow of ePrime is to go sequentially through the objects on the procedural timeline, do anything in the lists that it encounters, and then go on with the rest of the objects after that. Let's go back to our new procedure. Click and drag the fixation and Stroop slide objects onto the timeline. Notice that clicking and dragging an object from one timeline onto another creates a copy. Clicking and dragging an object within a timeline simply moves it around. We don't need these outside objects anymore, so you can delete those. Go back to Stroop List. Let's say that we want both congruent and incongruent red and blue stimuli. This makes four possible combinations. Furthermore, assume that we want two trials of each possible combination. This means that we would have eight trials total. To create this, click on the button with the arrows pointing downward. Add three levels. Click on the button with multiple arrows to the right and select two attributes. Double click on attribute one and name its troop word. Double click on attribute two and name its troop color. Populate the list with each possible combination that we just discussed. Red blue, red red, blue red, and blue blue. Now look at the summary. There are four samples, or trials, and one cycle. Furthermore, the selection is sequential, meaning that the first level will be selected, the fixation and Stroop slide objects will be presented, and then the next level will be run, until the cycle is complete. To modify these parameters, click on the Property Pages button, click on the Selection tab, and click on the Order drop-down menu. For most experiments, we want the trial order to be random, to avoid ordering effects. If the presentation is random, we can be confident that any effects we see aren't due to the order of the stimuli. Another option, random with replacement, can be chosen if you want each level to have an equal opportunity of being chosen on each trial, regardless of order. Select random and then click on the reset exit tab. We can define the cycle as complete when all samples are selected or after a predetermined number of samples. We can also specify when to exit the list, after a certain number of cycles, samples, or whether to time out after a certain time has elapsed. Let's keep the reset at all samples and exit the list after two cycles. This will give us eight total trials, sampling each trial in the list twice. Select OK. Now let's add two more attributes. Remember that attributes are logged into the output files and that labeling the condition of each trial will be useful in doing our analyses after the experiment is done. Click on Add Attribute and call it Condition. Label the trials as congruent or incongruent according to whether the word and colors match. 
Also remember that attributes can be used by other objects in the experiment, and that our instructions tell the subject to press F for a blue color and J for a red color. Click on Add Attribute, call it Correct Resp, and add the correct responses for each trial. Open the Stoop slide, click on the Text Subobject, and select the Subobject Property pages. In the text field, type Stroop word surrounded by brackets. The brackets indicate which attribute to put into this field. For example, if the list has randomly selected a level where Stroop word has the value red, then this field will be replaced by the word red. Similarly, we can replace the four color field with Stroop color, again surrounded by brackets. Click OK. Lastly, click on Object Properties, and then click on the Duration Input tab. Fill in the correct field with correct resp, surrounded by brackets. This will replace the field with whatever the correct response is for the trial. Say yes to turning on data logging and click OK. We are now ready to run the experiment. Click on the running purple man to generate the experiment. If it's your first time running the experiment, you will also be asked to save it. Keep the defaults for the subject and session numbers. The experiment will then run, first showing the welcome screen and then the instructions. Then it will begin the Stroop trials, randomly selecting levels and populating the fields of the objects with the attributes that we specified. Once you've mastered these principles, you have the ability to create a much wider variety of experiments. In our next video, we will use the list object to counterbalance the responses in our Stroop conditions. See you soon, and don't forget to press the spacebar to exit.